talk about what we should understand about this outbreak of Ebola, Paul. Well, I think the, um, the most important thing to understand is that this is a reflection of longstanding and growing inequalities of access to basic systems of health care delivery, and that includes the staff, the stuff, and, again, these systems. And that's, that's, what, uh, that's how we link public health and clinical medicine, um, is to uh, understand that we're delivering care in the context of protecting the, uh, the health of the population. And so if you go down to each of these uh, epidemics that are, of course, one epidemic, and you, you ask the question, well, do they have the staff stuff and systems that they need to respond? The answer is no. And then the, what will stop the epidemic, which it, it will be stopped, uh, is an emergency type response. But then again, how are we building local capacity to do that so these epidemics don't spread? Uh, as they would never spread in the United States, by and, the way. And the astounding fatality rates that we keep hearing about, is that more, in your sense, uh, in your view, a result of the disease itself or the, the weaknesses of the healthcare systems that confront them? Well, you know, I think the more important hypothesis is that it's the latter, right? Because, um, and, and it'd be great to talk to our colleagues at Emory, the infectious disease colleagues who, who treated uh, patients. It's not that they had an exper experimental medication, it's that they had supportive care. And supportive care in medical terms doesn't mean having someone hold your hand. It means if you're bleeding, you get <coughs> blood products. If you're hypotensive, or your blood pressure is low, you get uh, IV solutions, right? That's not what's happening in these Ebola centers. You know, it's really quarantine without a lot of the care, right? Because supportive care requires sometimes an ICU. That was very interesting that you just said that Ebola couldn't be, there couldn't be an outbreak in the United States. Well, there could be, but um, it would be sought quickly because patients would be isolated, not in quarantine facilities without medical care, but in places like Emory or the place where I work in Boston at the Brigham Women's Hospital. And even in, in Haiti or in Rwanda, you know, we've prepared, along with the authorities, isolation rooms that are not to shut people away, but to take care of them uh, while protecting uh, the rest of the staff if they have a, um, uh, an infectious illness, an airborne illness, say. So, you know, if the, back to Juan's question, why would there be such massive variation in case fatality rate? And to me, that always says because uh, there's not been an, an overlap between the epidemic, Ebola epidemic, and modern medicine. You know, we're talking about medieval level health systems um, and a modern plague that's going to spread. And when we can overlap modern medical systems and modern public health systems, then we can see what the case fatality really would be. My, 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 I mean, just to be provocative, what if it's 10 percent instead of 90 percent? Uh, what if it's 5% with proper medical care? And I, I'm saying even without a specific therapy for that disease, which we're all waiting for and hopeful about some of the new agents.